Now, there's a couple of things here that I actually want to spend kind of the most of the, re of the rest of the time on. Uh, we're, we'll go over the rest of the chapter when I get through these two subjects. But for the rest of the chapter, basically, after they, um, they all, all go on the run, you know, the five kings hide themselves, and they, they lock them up in a cave until they're done pursuing after their enemies. They kill the, they, they come back, they, they kill the kings, which I said, well, we'll read that. And then he goes back and goes to each one of those cities of the kings and destroys each one of those cities before they finally end up going back home. But uh, there's two things that are mentioned here that I want to go over. The first one is, it says in verse number 13, when it talks about what happened with the sun standing still, the moon staying, it says, is not this written in the book of Jasher? Now, there are multiple references in the Bible of other books that are not a book of the Bible being referenced. Uh, and, and people, unfortunately, it's a stumbling stone for some people because they start to say, well, what is this book of Jasher? Now, there's nothing wrong with this question. Hey, well, what is the book of Jasher? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing right off the bat. It's not scripture. It's not, if it were, it would be in God's word. And it's not there. And it hasn't been preserved. And the book of Jasher, there's no evidence to say it has survived the test of time. It's a, it's a lost book. It is a real book that was around during this time when Joshua was doing these battles. It was a real book. The Bible, see, the Bible makes reference, references to other people, to other literature, to things that someone might have said, but that doesn't make that source scripture or God's word. He's just saying, look, all this happened, and this is such an incredible event. You know, Joshua is saying, well, you don't have to just take my word for it. It's also in this book, right? It's also found in the book of Jasher, right? These things really happen. This is recorded. Now, the best of my understanding, because the book of Jasher is mentioned twice in the Bible, it appears to me just to be some book of records of like military battles or expeditions or something like that. It seems to have to do with military stuff because the other place it's mentioned is in 2 Samuel chapter 1. I'll just read this for you. 2 Samuel 1, 17, the Bible says, And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son when, when Saul and Jonathan died in the battle. And verse number 18 says, Also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Colon, behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. So the use of the bow, I right? said so it's a military thing, a military exercise or teaching or training about the use of the bow. So you have this book of Jasher has something like that. It also has the recording of Joshua in this great battle and the sun and mood standing still. So that's what we have from scripture. And you know what? That's all we need. Because God's given us all we need to know. But see, Satan knows that there are a lot of people that that won't be good enough for. And they're going to go and, and some, he, he's allowed someone to go and make up forgeries. And see, this is, this is where it's the con man is great at their game. Con man knows there's no book of Jasher. So I'm going to capitalize on this. Because you could just go backwards and say, well, what is the Bible reference that, that we don't really know about today? Oh, there we go. Now you could come up with anything you want. Anything you want. You could put it in this book and say, oh, this is, this is the book of Jasher. Hey, look what, look what we've uncovered under this rock in this cave in the Middle East. Look, oh, <laughs> it's the book of Jasher. It survived all these years. We've got it. And even if it is like, like somewhat older, you know, you find some older manuscript that, that wasn't just planted there because people, people have been already known to fake stuff like this. Someone just did it then, right? Maybe the Bible wasn't, you know, the writing wasn't 4,000 years old at the time. It was only 1,000 years old and they, and they did the same exact con game of writing this book of Jasher. It's very, it's very reasonable, and it's, that's actually the case of what happened here. I actually went and looked up the book of Jasher and started reading it just to see what it's all about, because there is a book of Jasher that exists, but the book of Jasher, this is one of the books that's, that's even, even online, I don't know if there's anyone who tries to teach that this is actually like, should be the word of God, 
But you also have those people, too, that say, oh, well, how do you know that this is in Scripture, right? And people say, well, so you're just trusting this Council of Nicaea from, you know, 300 A.D. that they, they're the ones that gave you your Bible. You just trust the Catholics. They gave you your Bible. No, dummy. I'm not trusting the Catholics that gave me the Bible. We're trusting that the churches that were valid New Testament churches knew what the scriptures were, and they continued to share the epistles and pass that down throughout the centuries. Now, it just so happened to be that there was a council where, where people were trying to determine what were they going to believe, but that's what it was. As a, as a council of people were deciding what were they going to believe, what were they going to assume, and what were they going to choose. But that doesn't mean that just because that, that they said it, that that's why it stands. There's a lot more to it than just some group of people sitting around a table. And it's actually very easy to tell, specifically in this book of Jeshua. I, started, I read like the first, I don't know, seven chapters or something. And <laughs> like all of the frauds, they're so easy to spot. The more you read the Bible, the so much easier it is to identify the fraud. And you know, that's actually, that's, that's how people work in fraud departments, like people who are looking to, to, to find counterfeit money. It's people who have studied real money just in, they just study that and study. They don't have to go out and learn all the different frauds. They just have to know the real thing inside and out. And then when they see something that doesn't match, it's, oh, it's okay, yeah, that's, that's the fraud right there. There's a counterfeit. There's a counterfeit. Why? Because they know the real one so well. And when you know the real, by, when you know God's word really well, these frauds just stand out like a sore thumb. What they do is they try to use biblical type language, like the Book of Mormon, right? There's a fraud for you, uh, any of these. And, and what's common, I think, between all of them, and I'm not an expert in all these different languages, but you know what? I have read this book quite a bit. And apart from maybe Deuteronomy or First and Second Chronicles, you don't have repeats of stories like, like just being told. Like, you don't, we don't have a repeat of Genesis in the Bible. And even those books I mentioned, they're not total repeats either. So if you compare First and Second Kings with First and Second Chronicles, they're different sources of the same events, but from slightly different perspectives, and they give you different information, but they're both written as scripture that you could tell the, the, the style of the Holy Ghost, to let alone the, the, the writers. And um, what this book of Jasher does, almost the, the whole book, all it covers in content is the first five books of Moses and the book of Joshua. And that's where it ends. And that's where it stops. So it goes through everything already. It's like, why would that be scripture? God already gave us the first five books of Moses and the book of Joshua. Like, we already have that. We don't need it again. And a lot of it literally is just repeating almost word for word. I didn't do a full on study of good, is it word for word? But just reading it and knowing the stories and knowing my own, just like, yeah, it says that, 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 that. And why does it do that? Because it wants to build credibility. But then what it does is it just inserts the creativity or imagination of whoever is writing it to just add whatever details they want in whatever areas they want to. So they, there, there's some story, stories in the Bible and they just decide to just start adding their own spin and adding their own twist and saying, oh, here's the parts that you didn't know, kind of like behind the scenes, right? Here's, here's all that extra information that you wanted to know that's not recorded for us in Scripture, but here it is anyways, it's all for you. And then you get the, the online sleuths, right? The, the people who are too smart for any church. Oh, 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 oh uh, I know so much more than all these churches. The people that want to go back and correct the Bible, and they're these language experts on Hebrew and Greek, and they don't even know the alphabet, but, but they know how to use a, a dictionary. And they think that that makes them experts in translation because they go to a dictionary, oh, well, did you know that this word means this and, and, and also this? And you can look at the sixth definition of this word. Book of Jasher. I'm just going to read for you. It, it's evident when you read this stuff. It's nonsense. It is not of God. It's very clear. 
I have a, a copy here from the, the fraudulent book of Jesus. And even this one, it's like this book came out in like the 1800s or something. So it's, it's just total fraud. And, and I don't know if there's anyone out there that actually buys into like the book of Jasher. So called someone, uh, there's so many people out there, I'm sure there's probably someone that is, but um, even online, you're going to see why, by and large, that this is just a kind of a fraudulent book. But uh, here's a couple verses from that book. It says, and when they were smiting, the day was declining toward evening, and Joshua said in the sight of all the people, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon, until the nation shall have revenged itself upon its enemies. So you see, this is the same story that we're reading about. And you'll see that they're using almost the same exact language, and they try to put their sentences together to flow the same way that the King James Bible reads, but they can never do it because it never sounds quite as awesome as the King James is because the King James is a word of God. So even when they're trying to mimic and imitate God's word, it still falls short. It still lacks the power. It lacks the, you know, just the beauty and everything of the language. And then it says in the next verse, it says, And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Joshua, and the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens. And it stood still six and thirty moments. And the moon also stood still and hastened not to go down a whole day. Six and thirty moments? First of all, what's a moment? What's 36 of them? Is it, is it 36 minutes? Is it 36 hours? No. The sun and the moon were out at the same time. It says they, they, they had them both stand still for a day. That's what happened. That's what the Bible says. So you want to know how we could prove the book of Jasher, a false book? Just from this one verse right here. There's a contradiction. Guess what, book of Jasher? You're out. I don't even need to read any of the other 80 chapters or however many there are to cover all the events of the Old Testament that we already have. Don't go looking for extra, oh, I just want, I just want to know this, this extra little bit of information that the Bible doesn't give me. Well, if it's not there, you don't need it. Don't go conjuring up anything to insert into God's Word. Because you insert into God's Word, you're going to be found a liar.